Welcome back, welcome back guys, guys to another race. And it's part number eight today of our F1 24 career mode. And this one for the Monaco Grand Prix, the duel in the Formula One calendar. But if you guys did miss the previous episode, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. It was a, a difficult, difficult day in Imola. I mean, it started off amazingly, really great qualifying, but then unfortunately... The weather, the tyres played absolute chaos and uh, it's been a very difficult two races for us from Miami to Imola. You know, one of those real low moments for a rookie in their first ever season in Formula 1. And, and the hope is that, you know, it's, it's one of those things that just happens in a rookie season and we can turn the tide and try and get back on track a little bit. Because before Miami, things were going really, really well, you know. We were going along. We had that really great result in Jeddah, which I'm still very, you know, I'm looking back at and kind of, you know, I want to try and get back to that because that, that's where we were really excelling well with the tyre wear, the temperature, managing the race really well but right now Lando Norris is in massive control of the teammate rivalry 6-0 and to be honest it, it's going to be very hard to even get one on him in terms of those stats there he leads uh you know myself in in the team off the back of his second win ever in Formula One in what is already an alternate F1 universe of ours in this career series he's second place in the championship having taken the win in Suzuka and then Animala Verstappen though consistent as ever he's not been off the podium once that is really quite a marker and uh lando's gonna need even more potentially and that's why the r d upgrades are so important you know there may be the mechanic of uh, myself and lando individually buying you know choosing which upgrade we want to purchase next but we both get their upgrade so we are working as a unit really you know there's a little competitive edge of where you want to take the car and obviously lando earns more r d points than me has higher recognition so he is steering the ship a little bit, but I am making a good contribution. You know, I think we put ourselves on a good path. You know, we've done two rear downforce upgrades. Those have all come from me because Lando hasn't been looking at those upgrades. He has been looking at weight reduction and I was reluctant to go with that one, but I couldn't actually afford the front downforce upgrade because I think our car's weaker on aero than it is chassis. I think chassis were actually the best team on the grid, um, but I couldn't afford an aero upgrade. So I just went with weight reduction. But what is what is this? What is this, mate? App still slacking. You may be buying upgrades, but you're buying the useless one. It's all reliability right now for Lando. He's uh, pranged out about the car failing him when he's leading one of these other races. We now come to the specialist, Denise. What you got for us as she uh, glances at her laptop and then looks... Wait, what is she looking at in those three seconds? Like, she's not even got the screen fully open. Like, is that how she does strategy work? Like, yep, uh, uh, yep, done, done, done. Three seconds, didn't even open the whole screen. Uh, I couldn't even see the bottom of the laptop, but I've decided the strategy. <laughs> Thankfully, the goal she's setting is pretty easy. As you guys have let me know, you can actually do this in the practice program. And then we come to uh, Miguel, and uh, <laughs> he's, he's not here. I feel like we've scared him off with the chat about what he's wearing. You know, we, we had a go at him for wearing a McLaren top when he's a contractor. And now he's just not turned up to work. Ignore the fact he's a contractor. Where is he? Where is he? Anyway, meanwhile, Chloe... Um, uh, stress test any ties to above 30%. Oh, Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Have you not been looking at the data? Have you not been watching our races? This is easy. I do that in my sleep right now in this game. 30% where? That, that's, I'm pretty sure we'll be cooking a set of tyres like that just in qualifying alone, maybe. That's going to be a very easy choice for us. We're going to be doing that probably on the first set of tyres we're using in the race. And then Marcel uh, with the power you consult and goals overtake mode for 35 seconds during the race weekend. That, again, is pretty darn easy, uh, especially we're going to try and force a move at Monaco at some point, I'm hoping. And then Colin, what you got for us here, mate? Um... Well, your goals are absolutely rubbish. Who would have thought? Complete the weekend with no more than four collisions of the cars. That's just never going to happen because it, it's career mode with AI. It's, it's just always going to happen. And then three laps with two different components of engines. That, that's just useless. That is absolutely you. You are useless, Colin. Anyway, looking ahead then to the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. We remain in second place in the R&D chart. Plateauing a bit along with uh, Red Bull, uh, Mercedes and Ferrari, to be fair. Aston Martin, the ones that made the biggest gains. Aston take another step forward at being closer to us three teams who are chasing 
chasing Red Bull, but they're kind of already there. We saw that in Miami. We saw that in Imola as well. You know, the Astons were right up there. So uh, they're going to be even better potentially. And then Kick Sauber closing up on Williams. Those two having a very close battle along with uh, Haas, uh, V-Carb and Alpine. All three very close together to the point where I can't even tell where Alpine and V-Carb begins on that R&D chart. But yeah, a bit of a holding pattern moment then for a, a lot of us at the sharp end. But Monaco, it's not going to matter because it's really all about the driver here. They can make a huge difference. You know, car upgrades sure can help out a bit. But it's about who can get close to the walls, who's going to put their neck on the line, the car on the line, and get those last couple of inches uh, of space on the apexes, you know, etc. to try and find that lap time in what is the most important qualifying of the entire season. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I don't know if it's, you know, because we're eight episodes into the series, so I, I've just really got used to it, but... The car actually felt pretty, pretty good around Monaco. It was the first time where I didn't really feel uncomfortable with the handling of the car. Um, you know, whether that's me getting used to the handling model or the car itself just works well at Monaco, like the McLaren car specifically, works well at Monaco with a couple of upgrades we've got. Obviously, a lighter car than you'd have in Grand Prix mode, for example. I don't know, but it actually felt pretty good. And even the steering, you know, wasn't, you know, the sensitive... The sensitive turn in it, etc., was actually quite nice in a way at Monaco because it really meant you could be quite nimble on the front end uh, and not feel like you're, you know, going to hit the wall every single time, basically. So, yeah, no, it was actually quite good. Um, in terms of the lap time in Q1, it started off well, but then others went so quick. So, myself and Lando ended P12 and 13, but obviously, as I've said before in Imola, I'd rather we start a bit slow in Q1 and build up through Q2, Q3, you know, I think that's literally what Carlos Sainz said in real life at the Monaco Grand Prix just gone about, you know, the need to build up the lap, build up that confidence and build up just rhythm in, in what you're doing at each corner, basically, and learning as you go on through the sessions, basically. And that's exactly what I prefer to usually try and do, really, because I felt like we had a lot of pressure on ourselves in Imola because we went so quick in Q1. And going into this entire race weekend, that was the focus for me as well, is just, you know, remembering how quick we were over one lap around Imola, forgetting how the race went, because that was totally out of my control, uh, and feeling that, or trying to feel that confidence again from qualifying in Imola. Oh, we've got a quick car, and we're quicker now at some circuits where I go better. You know, I, I generally have never gone too well at Miami, but then also at the same time, a lot of you guys were saying Miami was very difficult for you as well. But for me personally, I've always gone quicker than Miami uh, at Monaco, at Imola. So also just having that, you know, I think I can see the pattern here and genuinely we have some pace Hopefully, we can put, put put the lap together. So, we've been riding on board with this in, uh, with this uh, Q2 lap in, in its entirety. So, you can see every single corner and Jimmy and shake of the car. And, uh, yeah, that darting front end is actually pretty nice, like I said, around Monaco. Because it means you can be so, well, try and be pinpoint accurate with where you place the car. And uh, as we cross the line, it's P2. It's uh, a, about a quarter of a second slower than Verstappen, but it's still promising to be up there in P2, like as a position, for example. Uh, obviously, it's still time to find. You know, we were, you know, so much closer to Verstappen and Imola, but it takes time. You know, maybe the second lap in Q2 might be better as we do go out again, because even though we're P3, Perez there in second place, everyone was going out, and I just felt like, let's go out just in case and just to get another lap under our belt to gain that extra bit of confidence maybe going to the top 10 shootout. But uh, like in real life, uh, plenty of traffic. Lando right ahead of us. Leclerc tucked up right behind me, and I was hoping to get a gap to Lando, but uh, Leclerc is so insistent of overtaking me that we let him by eventually, and then uh, we kind of prepare ourselves uh, in, this, in this stage, and as we wind up to the end of the outlap, you know, mentally, just kind of taking a few deep breaths, getting ready for the roller coaster that is this circuit, preparing ourselves in terms of the ERS mode on hot lap. I actually changed my differential and put it a bit higher as uh, that was uh, quite low for a qualifying lap, I feel, because usually I'll put the diff lower if I want to try and eke out the tyre wear, for example, in the race. But in quali, that's no bother. Turn one, decent enough. We float the car through, nail the apex pretty well. We're going to be about one and a half tenths up as we just climb the hill then towards Casino Square. Bit wide, and the rear end snapped, and we have to catch it. And we have done so very well. 
We did really well, I must say, to keep it out of the wall there. Otherwise, that would have been a disaster class of embarrassment in Q2 of crashing out the car before we even get to the top 10 shootout. But very well. Um, but we basically just understeered. I think we got on the marbles in a, in a, in a way on the outside line. And there's the uh, nose cam on board just showing you how close it was. And then just a replay of the onboard again. Real big snap, but very well to hold it with a double drift from left to right. And we can live to fight another day uh, with no issues on the car for the top 10 shooter. And that's the important thing, to be honest, because if we go to the checkered flag, we actually didn't have to worry about, um, uh, about, about the lap time because we are through into the top 10 shootout in that P3 never really changed so that's all calm but now it's time for the shootout then and the most important Q3 lap we're gonna do all season long as we ready ourselves and it's go 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 for our first flying lap here in the last part of qualifying down to turn one late on the brakes float the car in very close to the wall on the left hand side I feel like that was the quickest I've taken turn one all day which is very promising and this time making sure we keep the car tight on the line and just being easy on throttle because it was so easy to lose the rear end then when we made that mistake at the end of Q2 bit of a lock up into Mirabeau we definitely lost some time there not getting the, the front end as tight as possible at that right hander but then we threw the hairpin it feels a bit slow floating the car in second gear keeping in second gear to get the nose turned in get on power early and then using battery through the tunnel as Russell sets down a marker early on in this qualifying now down the crest oh no wow, that was a heck no no no, no oh you're kidding me ah oh. I felt like that was a really good lap you know and we've just clipped the inside wall that's a uh, it's another rookie error, isn't it? It's just... Ah. Man, I really felt good about that. I really felt... I, I actually thought we could have been fighting for the front row here at Monaco. Honestly, I was feeling so in the zone. And uh, maybe that that Q2 spin was uh, the sign of me maybe losing a bit of uh, composure. Uh, it was a little lock-up on the front left. And I was jinking the car to make sure we didn't go too deep into the corner but in doing so i jinked it to to the inside and we clipped the wall uh, and, it's, and that's it it's over there's nothing more to say uh lando only p6 but it's very close to be fair look at the lap times between lando perez hamilton very very close alonso doing amazingly in third place there so the aston martin upgrades working well it's the home man leclerc on the front row though alongside max verstappen shock horror but what could have been? What could have been? Instead, now, I've got a bit of a difficult race ahead of me, maybe, at Monaco. With the way the AI have been difficult to overtake so far in the career series from P10, uh, it might be a very painful Grand Prix coming up. Let's go, uh, and we've got to try and really make up for our mistake if we can on the opening lap. And then after that, it's Monaco, so who knows what we can actually do. Let's go to the grid. <laughs> Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world-famous Monte Carlo Casino, the first opened in 1863. And of course, a certain road race first held in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. The astonishing Circuit de Monaco is, for all intents and purposes, virtually unchanged since its inaugural race back in 1929. The faster cars of today ensure the 19 corners past the casino and along the seafront remain as thrilling as ever. A 2.1 mile lap here takes us around an entire country, yet never more than inches from the race ending barriers. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Perez, Norris, Russell, Sainz, Albon, and McLaren, Bottas, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Joe, Sonoda, Ricardo, Magnussen, Gasly, Ocon and Logan Sargent. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. And alongside me here today in the commentary box, 
Anthony Davidson. Now, sadly, things didn't work out for them last time. It was a bad race. Question is, though, can they recover today? Yes, they can, Crofty. You've got to put it behind you. Whatever happened last time, I was always told as a driver, park it, forget about it. Obviously, feel the pain when it happens, but then you can't dwell on it and carry that through to the next race. So put it behind you and just crack on with this race coming your way now. All right, here we go then. P10 to start the Monaco Grand Prix. This is going to have to be the lap one of all lap ones, unless we want to just be looking at the back of Albon's Williams for 39 laps, because it is going to be so difficult to overtake, even more so in this year's game, because I have faced difficulty with that, you know, with the ERS and the way the AI is so good at managing it. We're on the medium tyre. Most people have chosen mediums, but like in real life, we've got a couple of people that have chosen and gambled to go to the hard tyre in order to get track position in the first phase of this Grand Prix. Very interesting stuff. Signs one of them and he's directly ahead of us. So I'm really hoping that he has a slow launch off the line. We can hopefully do Albon off the line as well and maybe pick up two positions and that then might just be it for the entire Grand Prix because although it is one everyone wants to win, it is also going to be a procession and a very hard place to pass but it's also a massive challenge and that's why every driver loves it and with that the lights are coming on then we're gonna be go 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 for the monaco grand prix lights out and we're on the way it's a slow start for Sainz, and we do get the jump it's a slow one for perez and we've managed to make not only two but three overtakes as we all to get george russell it's a blitzing start for leclerc as well the home man leads the monaco grand prix we send it down the inside of perez unbelievable aggression from us but we also get him because he's on the hards as well some of these guys i think they're going to be regretting their decision the hard tie is really not performing at the start of this race as alonso and hamilton are side by side at the hairpin ahead of lando norris yellow flags behind but what a start for us p6 but a safety car red flag red flags out it was a safety car initially but the red flag is out just like in real life oh my days wow just like in real life, the red flag has come out on lap one. And like in real life, that has now just screwed over anyone that chose the hard compound. Because although you can change your tyres, you still have to follow the changing of the compound rule. Oh my god. And that includes the two leaders. Leclerc, he got a mega getaway here in front of his home crowd on the outside at turn one. Gets into first for Ferrari. Verstappen down to second. But Verstappen and Leclerc, along with Perez and uh, Carlos Sainz, they, they all started on the hard compound. So they will have to switch to either mediums and then try and take mediums all the way to the end, 38 laps or so, uh, whenever we restart it. Or they're going to have to make another pit stop, basically. And I assume we'll go to the end as it was all oh, Perez being absolutely no scoped out of this one by Russell there with a bit of terrorism at the hairpin uh, apex. But uh, yeah, uh, well, there you go. No, no, there you go. Just like it. This is actually quite realistic. Like in real life, the, we're being told the hards will go all the way to the end, which means those of the those drivers that have to go to mediums to in order to change their compound, they're going to have to try and take mediums all the way to the end of the race, which is going to be very difficult for them, especially on the game here, because we know the tyre wear is so, so different compound to compound. It's very harsh. Uh, we've seen that at Jeddah before. Uh, all the other way they could go is they could go on to another set of hards and they have to then actually make a pit stop, which is obviously not ideal in a race where the rest of us will be going to the end. So... Wow, okay, things just got very, very interesting with the top two definitely under pressure. So we now ready ourselves for another race start in the Principality. This time we're P6 alongside Lando as we look to forehead lights and we're underway for the second time in Monaco and it's a horrendous start for Verstappen and Leclerc and we've made a triple overtake we've got Lando on the exit and we just went and did Hamilton Alonso round the outside of turn one it was three abreast and we came out on top with third place right now what is going on and Leclerc ahead of us he's chosen another set of hards so he has to make a pit stop 
And Verstappen is on medium, so he will be wearing out those tyres a lot more than I am. I am technically in the prime position to maybe try and fight for the race win. Who knows? We need to get past Leclerc ASAP because he's making another pit stop. He is basically an obstacle in our fight versus Verstappen with those worn medium tyres at the end of the race. This is a replay then. A really slow start for the front row. Look at that. Three wide and an outside overtake on the seven-time and two-time world champions respectively. Really great stuff. They're still scrapping, by the way, Hamilton Alonso. They're so close together. But lap four then. Time to get into a rhythm. We didn't get a chance to do so on the opening lap with the red flag. So now we try and get into a flow around this Grand Prix and slightly heavier fuel. Verstappen set the fast up of the Grand Prix. So he's trying to pull away in order to, to gap us because eventually he will be facing a lot more tyre wear than any of us on the hards. So it's important for him to pull away. And that's why it's so important that we overtake Leclerc. Because right now, he's actually not even looking that quick. He is right now a mobile obstacle for us to try and chase after and keep the pressure on Max Verstappen. And as we float the car through in second gear, nail the apex curb and get ready to use overtake mode and abuse the ERS through the tunnel. Puff of smoke from Leclerc's rear end. He's slow. We go down the inside. It's going to be so fine. Leclerc gives us the room though on the exit. We use more battery to get the nose in and at to back. We've made the move before swing pool and we're up into second place of the Monaco Grand Prix and I, I cannot believe the the position we're in right now this is what are we doing what are we actually doing right now we seem to be having some great pace on the hard compound of tire and remember remember Jeddah that you know our best race yet so far in the series episode two we had some great pace on the hards then. So right now, confidence is supremely high, trying to now maybe chase down and pressurize that man in the lead. But let's just take a look, a look at a replay of this move. Always great to see the iconic shots of F1 cars through the Monaco Tunnel apex. And as you exit the tunnel, the sun flashes your eye. We go down the inside. Leclerc corner cuts a little bit there, but we keep it going. And it's a fair fight then into to back. And he gives us room to work with. Here's the uh, uh, looking back on board from the Ferrari then. So surprised he didn't go defensive. He left the door open for us, really. Then here you can see he remains ahead by cutting over, but leaves us the room, which is respectful from Leclerc. And then we use a lot of battery to get the nose turned in before the okay, next section. Mate, so uh, lap five the then, almost immediately the after making the overtake, my engineer is going on about the engine temperatures, but... Uh, and he scared me a bit, but I don't know what he's on about because our engine temperatures are nowhere near 136. They're 131 to 130, nowhere near the calamities we were having at Miami. And, and to that point, we're actually pulling away from another car. We've made an overtake and we're pulling away from them. This is unprecedented stuff at the moment here in Monaco. As we pull a near two-second gap to Leclerc, we uh, obviously successfully achieved our mid-race objective of keeping the engine to a cool temperature. The stap ahead of us is 5.2 seconds ahead. So that's quite a hefty margin, but you can see I've got some pace in the car, setting a purple first sector. You can see clearly on the heads-up display, the tyres aren't overheating, the engines are overheating. Clearly, we've actually got really good pace on the hards relative to other people on the same hards. So very much like Jeddah, you know, for the first time, this actually feels like I'm driving a McLaren that is second place in the R&D chart. You know, so far, you know, we've not been up to speed. In quali, yes, I crashed out. But remember, before that, I felt so confident in the car. And you're seeing why. Genuinely, we're on pace now. But there's still plenty of work to be done. And uh, unfortunately, Mark has told me that we've got a little bit of wear on the ICE. And uh, that's going to maybe put us down on power slightly. I mean, if there's ever a place to be down on power, Monaco's not too bad. But please, F1 gods, don't you dare. Don't you dare give me an engine failure in a race like this where we're in prime position. You know, we've uh, brought the gap down from 5 to 2.4 seconds on lap 12. So four laps and we gained two and a half seconds. And then a further four laps and we brought the gap down to 1.4. So you can see I am also 
facing a bit of tyre wear because the rate at which we're catching Max is slowing down. And, there, you know, there's an ebb and flow to this race. I'm making sure I'm saving battery, saving tyres. I'm kind of doing one lap where I'm kind of cooling off, then doing another lap where we're a bit quick because, you know, for once now, I've not got the pressure of 500 AI cars behind me. So I, I can actually do that kind of, you know, clever driving that I feel like the handling model is trying to make you do anyway. But it's hard to do that when you're being badgered by so many cars. But in this instance, we could control our pace, protect our tyres, and play a waiting game of just slowly catching Verstappen. And we've done that now. You would have seen here, lap 19, since the start of this lap, Verstappen's look really slow. I'm not going at full pace on purpose because I just, you know, there's no need to be too urgent about this. At some point, the move will come. I just need to believe in it. At the same time, we want to stay with Verstappen because Monaco is Monaco. If he's going to try and go to the end, this is the place where he can maybe do it, you know. It is difficult to overtake, so we need to, uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of hard to, to know how to play it. Hey, mate, Verstappen's ahead of you. They're holding us up now, so let's please try and get past as soon as possible and get on with our race. Push, push. Okay, Mark. Okay, well, Mark's actually just made the decision for me. He's told me to get the hurry up. He thinks we're being slowed up by Verstappen. That is the biggest confidence boost you can ever hear, that he thinks we just need to get past him and go on with our race. So we've been told to overtake him before lap 25. So it is time to pressurize a reigning F1 world champion and look to overtake him for P1 at the Monaco Grand Prix as we go through Raskas. Very close. Oh, Verstappen comes in. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, we've already met the objective! Verstappen's in! He's bailed out! He doesn't think he can get to the end! And he needs to make another stop! Oh my god, we're in the lead! We're in the lead! We're leading! We're leading! Okay, okay, we need to calm things down. Lap 21, 7.2 seconds ahead of Leclerc, who he, he himself needs to make a pit stop because he hasn't changed tyre compound. So it could be Hamilton Alonso fighting each other for the podium steps. Meanwhile, Verstappen has come out in P9 on fresh, medium tyres, going for the move on Carlos Sainz on the outside. He's crashed. He's into the wall. What the f***? What the f***? Unbelievable, mate. Oh my god. Oh my god. Verstappen has binned it. He's crashed into Sainz. Oh, he's really misjudged that. Sainz shut the door. Sign shut the door, and the move was never really on on the outside of turn one. The space was always closing, and you can see clearly there Verstappen with a bit of an acceleration into the brake zone almost to try and force the move through, and he's misjudged it. It's a bad, bad day in the office for Red Bull. No one will be jumping in that swimming pool of theirs at hospitality, but I just might be jumping in the marina at the end of this race. Virtual safety car is out and now ending. For Verstappen's crash, Leclerc, he's going to pit. So the car, the next car to us that we need to worry about is Hamilton, 8.3 seconds. But he's got Alonso on his tail. So he's going to be looking in his mirrors, I'm hoping, rather than forwards. But for us, it's now just a, a case of trying to control the pace, control our tyres, and make sure we don't make any, any mistakes like we did in qualifying. Meanwhile, lap 23 onto 24, Leclerc comes in for his pit stop to change his tyre compound. Wow, Leclerc and Verstappen on the front row together. And now I don't think either of them will be in the points, really. Uh, well, Verstappen's obviously out, but let's see where Leclerc comes out. But that is uh, looking like a horrid decision to choose the hard compound at the start of the race, huh? As uh, Sonoda and Joe Guanyu through. Yeah, the whole front row. Leclerc and Verstappen out the points as it stands. Leclerc obviously can still come back with the fresh uh, tyres he's got. But uh, and meanwhile, Al Bono doing an amazing job. Lando must be completely peeved off because he's been looking at that Williams rear wing pretty much all race. That's what I was worried we were going to do. And Lando's the one doing it, staring at the back of the Williams, who's in a fantastic P4, I must say, right now. Fair play to Albon. As we go on through this race, lap 24 to 31, six laps, and Hamilton has brought down the gap from, uh, it was eight to six, to now 2.5. So they are catching me, but that's also because I am driving at about 50%. 
Just making sure I don't do anything silly by pushing the car. The tyres are very second-hand. And to be fair to me, I actually go and then pull a bit of a gap back on Hamilton. At 36, we get a bit of a move on just to prove to myself that I do have a bit more pace in the tank. And that I am just genuinely controlling the race because uh, we pulled the gap nearly to nearly four seconds. So we could pull away more if we wanted to, but I'm just controlling everything and just trying to have a very calm drive to alleviate any mistakes, mishaps, bit of praying in there for the engine that's a bit worn as we go on now to the final lap of this Monaco Grand Prix and we're still in first place. Can you believe it? Can you believe Because I can't. I literally can't. It, just look back at the last two episodes. How horrendous it has been for us. Miami, awful, awful performance. Imola, completely out of our hands. You know, the wet situation. This, this is vindication. This, this is karma coming back to us for having to have a torturous two episodes from Miami to Monaco. Uh, obviously a little bit of luck in there of, you know, people choosing the hards at the start and the red flag coming out. But sometimes that happens in Formula 1. It literally happened in real life Formula 1 at this year's 2024 Monaco Grand Prix. And we're just soaking it in, going slower than we need to, to really bask in the achievement that we're doing today. Because in our rookie debut season, we come through the final few bends of a long, arduous Monaco Grand Prix. It's not only going to be a first podium in Formula 1, it's not even a normal first win in Formula 1. Because we are the young king of Monaco! We've just won the Monaco Grand Prix! Come on, get in! What a race! What a race! Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> you always look back at a race like this and think, if I had just made that mistake there or locked up here, there would have been contact. And every one of those overtakes is a moment where you have to absolutely nail it, perfect it. And that's exactly what they're able to do today. Great stuff indeed. As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team, securing the win and proving that they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. That first taste of champagne on the top step of the podium is going to taste so, so sweet. There we are. P1, the trophy, our first trophy in Formula 1, and it's first, it's a first place trophy. What, what, what did we do? What did we do? Uh, quite ironically, Red Bull and Verstappen have been so good this season that it doesn't even look like we've even made a dent in anything in the standings. He still leads the way by a large margin. I've not even moved up the order in the standings, but... I don't care. I don't care. And we get an accolade. We get an accolade. Our first accolade uh, achievement, a tiered achievement for championship points. So I think the achievement was 60 points in our F1 career. That was the first tier yardstick for this accolade. And in doing so, we actually tangibly get a reward. I didn't know that. We get a reward of extra experience. So actually trying to go for accolades is very important then to try and boost your overall rating. I, I had actually no idea it was so intrinsically uh, linked to the overall rating. So we're now halfway through our way to 78 rating. We're still only 38 recognition because, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we've still got a long way to go to become a Lando Norris in Formula 1. Uh, you know, it's one race win, uh, you know, and it was with a bit of luck as well, but it's uh, what a way to kick off really and get back from the travesty what that was the last two races. Uh, Really? Really? Colin, I've just won a bloody race and you're looking that miserable. I'm so done with you, mate. Anyway, depressed specialists aside, uh, what a race. What a race. Guys if, you, guys, if you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get to subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. Oh, what a race. What a race. <laughs>